On the island of Puerto Rico, nestled in the hills surrounding the city of Arecibo, stands the most famous radio telescope in the world, which over the years has become a pop icon of scientific research. Built in the early 60s, exploiting a natural depression of the ground for almost 60 years, was the main instrument of the Arecibo Observatory, thanks to which many things have been discovered in every field of astronomy from the planetary one with measurements of all kinds and the production of the first radar images of asteroids, to the astrophysical one with the confirmation of the existence of neutron stars and the discovery in 1992 of the first extrasolar planets. Without forgetting the strong emotional drive that the great antenna has always represented in the world for SETI research. In its approximately 60 years of existence, the large parabola, 305 meters wide, has withstood storms and hurricanes that sometimes affect Puerto Rico and even several earthquakes. All adversities were overcome without serious consequences, although in September 2017 it was necessary to close the structure for a short period due to Hurricane Irma, and in January of 2020, the activity was stopped as a result of the seismic swarm that occurred during the earthquake on January 7th. Last August, however, the first signs of catastrophe one of the support cables slipped from its anchorage and fell on the antenna, destroying dozens of panels. The restoration work should have started a few weeks later, but before they started, on November 7th, another cable collapsed, causing even more damage to the antenna. At this point, on November 19th, the National Science Foundation, the agency that manages the observatory, was forced to make an announcement that none of us would have ever wanted to hear. The damage to the structure is too severe to be repaired. The large parabola with the entire aerial platform will be dismantled in the coming months. A decision probably not entirely unrelated to the sharp decline in public funding, which over the years has become completely insufficient to ensure the full operation of the structure. It remains an immense void, therefore for the loss of an observatory so loved by all, but perhaps not everyone knows that. And this gap, at least from a technical point of view, has already been abundantly filled. Let's see how and by whom. China has been chasing the West on the road to technological transformation for many years now, but never before with Chinese astronauts in Earth orbit, automatic probes on the moon, space stations, supercomputers, and satellites of the latest generation, has its determination to invest much of its growing economic exuberance in basic research and space exploration been felt so strongly. But the news that more than any other seems to us able to give the measure of this extraordinary acceleration is that after just five years of work, China has completed the construction of FAST. That is what, with its 519 meters in diameter, must be considered today the largest single antenna radio telescope in the world, thus appropriating a record that for more than half a century was held by the radio telescope of Arecibo with its parabola of 305 meters. The idea to build fast, we will see later the meaning of this name, was born from a previous adhesion of China to the troubled square kilometer array, SCA project, when it was still assumed that the radio telescope wanted by the international scientific community could be built in the Asian country. In the end, it was decided that SCA would be built in two separate sites, in South Africa and Australia and it would not use a single mirror but a large expanse of smaller radio antennas. So in 2006, China decided to set up on its own and take advantage of the experience gained to build its own radio observatory. Extraordinarily large, not only for reasons of political prestige, but also because of the need to impose a new dimensional standard to the scientific research of radio waves. But let's go in order and enjoy step by step the stages of this extraordinary realization starting from the depiction of the place where it was erected, i.e. Pingtang County, in the southern province of Guizhou. This part of the territory is formed by a continuous expanse of low mountains separated by cavities of karstic origin, mostly of almost circular shape. Just inside one of these, the Dongwudang Depression, 800 meters wide and chosen among many others scattered throughout China. It was decided in 2007 to house the antenna of a radio telescope similar to that of Arecibo, whose parabola, as we said at the beginning, was also built in a natural hollow. The area is definitely sparsely populated, 
The nearest cities are Anshun, more than 130 kilometers northwest, and the Great Guayang, 150 kilometers north, so there are few artificial radio signals that could interfere with the observations. The obligation to respect the radio silence, also turning off cell phones, will have to be observed about 10 kilometers before the arrival at the site, so that the Chinese government had to move to another location, not without controversy the about 9,000 people who lived less than 5 kilometers from the installation. The staff of resident scientists and technicians, about 70 people in all, will move for emergencies with two helicopters always available on the square of the control center, while the visitors who are expected to be very numerous will almost all arrive by bus, since the area is forbidden to private traffic. And the first thing they will see on the horizon will be the six large metal towers, each 150 meters high, pylons that support by means of tie rods, as in a suspension bridge, a wire mesh covered with a giant puzzle of about 4,500 triangular-shaped panels. It will be a really exciting spectacle that they will be able to enjoy when they manage to have an overall view of the instrument going up the surrounding hills. But at this point, making the eye run on the imposing structure from one of the panoramic shovels, many people will ask themselves a question. If the radio telescope is so heavily anchored to the ground, how will it be able to receive signals from objects that instead rotate following the apparent motion of the celestial sphere? In fact, both FAST and Arecibo are static structures, in the sense that for obvious mechanical reasons, we are talking about weights of thousands of tons, their parabola remains always directed to the zenith without any possibility to move to follow the stars, as it happens instead in optical telescopes or radio telescopes of smaller dimensions. Be sure to join the Insane Curiosity channel. Click on the bell. You will help us to make products of even higher quality. But if the parabola cannot move, a minimum solution exists anyway. To move in its place, the signal reception cabin located in the focus of the instrument. And here lies one of the most important qualitative differences of FAST compared to Arecibo. The greater mobility of the receiver, which in the Chinese radio telescope can be moved up to 40 degrees from the zenith, while in the Arecibo's radio telescope only 20 degrees, which translates for fast into the possibility of chasing a celestial object for a period of almost 6 hours, compared to 2.7 hours in Arecibo. A really considerable gain such as to allow a higher speed in data acquisition, especially considering that the receiver has also the possibility to observe 19 regions of the sky at the same time and different wavelengths. And it is certainly this characteristic that the Chinese National Academy of Sciences wanted to emphasize with the choice of the name FAST, which is the acronym of 500-meter aperture spherical radio telescope, but also the English word for FAST. Another huge advantage for FAST is the ability to modify the curvature of a part of the reflector, transforming from spherical to parabolic, a portion of about 300 meters in diameter. Every single panel, in fact, can vary its inclination, with the double advantage of supporting the movement of the receiver, making it always work in axis with the reflector and to correct the spherical apparition of the latter by better focusing the signal. In the first case, the difference in positive is between following an object at the edge of the field of view with the naked eye and having it directly in front of it. In the second case, it is a bit like correcting a defect in vision by modifying the curvature of the crystalline lens. The technology in the latter case is similar to what is called active optics in mirror telescopes, and that has contributed so much in recent years to the extraordinary progress of astronomical photography. But what will be the fields of research where FAST will be able to make use of its much-praised capabilities? And will the possible scientific discoveries really be such as to justify an economic investment of almost $250 million? Well, in the meantime, it must be said that in the recent past, the greatest discoveries in this field, such as pulsars, quasars, cosmic background radiation, and organic interstellar molecules, have arrived thanks to the use of increasingly large and sophisticated radio telescopes, which suggests that it will still be the large antennas, at least until the next generation of optical space telescopes, enormously more favored than Hubble from larger diameters, to bring the most significant changes in astronomical research. Investing in radio waves will therefore be scientifically convenient also in the near future, and to quantify the superiority of FAST over its predecessors, 
It will be enough to remember that the Australian Parks Radio Telescope, single antenna 65 meters in diameter, would be able to detect a hypothetical alien signal of 1 gigawatt power only if it came from a star less than 4.5 light years away, which would restrict the research to a single star system, that of Alpha Centauri. The Arecibo Observatory, with its opening of 305 meters, would extend the range up to a distance of 18 light years to include a dozen stars. But FAST could pick up such a signal to 30 light years, keeping more than 1,500 stars under control. And to better understand the magnitudes at stake, remember that an emission power of 1 gigawatt, 1 billion watts, is very little on a galactic scale, almost a whisper. In 1974, the famous message sent by Arecibo to the globular cluster M13 had an omnidirectional energy of 20 terawatts, therefore 20,000 times more powerful. In the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, FAST would therefore have more than 100 times the probability of Arecibo being able to pick up a possible signal with the same sample of stars examined. But although the titles of the popular articles on the radio telescope have focused only or almost on this application aspect, FAST will be at the forefront in many other things. Designed to detect signals in wavelengths between 0.1 and 4 meters, it will be able, for example, to trace with great accuracy the distribution of neutral hydrogen, the most abundant element in the galaxy. This will allow, among other things, to get more reliable data on the acceleration of the expansion of the universe and therefore on the real nature of the so-called dark energy, the mysterious force that, according to the most popular cosmological models, is the primary cause. The only way to accurately measure the amount of acceleration is in fact to establish the distance of very remote galaxies, which becomes possible only by detecting if between the galaxy and the observer there is or not a hydrogen cloud capable of dampening its brightness. And for this type of measurement, at the required accuracy levels, can provide only a radio telescope of fast diameter and sensitivity. The Great Chinese Parabola will also be able to give a decisive impulse to the discovery of new pulsars, objects whose casuistry needs to be expanded to provide important indications on all that we still do not know about black holes and gravitational waves. The theory tells us that there should be about 60,000 pulsars observable in our galaxy, but so far in half a century, less than 2,000 have been discovered. With FAST, we hope to find at least another 4,000, and about 50 even in the Andromeda galaxy. It is also expected that its sensitivity is high enough to identify the radio emissions of gas giants like our Jupiter orbiting distant stars, thus increasing the case history on extrasolar planets, and that here on Earth is able to take the leadership of very long baseline interferometry systems, that is, the observation of the same portion of the sky with several radio telescopes scattered around the world, coordinated with each other to obtain radio images with resolutions in the order of thousandths of a second of arc, combining in fact the signals acquired by two or more antennas distant from each other, it is possible to obtain a resolving power equivalent to that achievable with a single antenna having a diameter equivalent to the distance between the combined instruments, and to be able to implement the already existing network with an antenna like the Chinese one would mean to increase the efficiency of the whole system. For the moment, the telescope has been managed only by Chinese technicians and scientists who, in addition to starting the planned research, have identified and solved the problems typically related to the beginning of such complex structures. Only recently has access been given to researchers from all over the world, thanks also to the possibility to remotely manage the radio telescope and its instruments. On September 26, 2017, there was the first light, the first official observation made by the instrument and it seems quite understandable and also very symbolic that the choice of the object to be targeted fell on the pulsar at the center of the Crab Nebula, which in 1054 AD was observed in China as a brilliant galactic supernova and instead completely ignored in Europe by Western astronomers. The old Arecibo is unfortunately gone, but fast as all the numbers to not feel so bad about the loss.